Hello and welcome to another Tim Allen 1337 guide on Black Desert Online. Today we're going to be talking about Striker, the basics of Striker to be more accurate. We're going to be going through the different pieces of gear that you can select now that we have multiple boss gear selections in each slot. Uh, we're going to be going over strategies for accessories. We'll talk about Kaffirs a little bit, some of the bonus uh, effects that have come into the game, and then the all-intimidating skill tree as well, and things you should prioritize, lock, stay away from, etc. Uh, so we're just going to hit the very basics here. Uh, I'll give you guys some insights on what skills to use and maybe uh, a few to chain into a combo. But let's start with gear. Let's stay focused on that. Uh, and we'll kind of talk about gems at the same time. So let's just work around this wheel here. Um, we're going to start with a main hand. Uh, I have a Zarka Gauntlet. There is an Often Tet, which offers more AP at the sacrifice of accuracy. With where I'm building my striker and how I like to play, I don't think I'm going to be getting an Often Tet. I, I go to the boss, I try to get the box and all that stuff, and I'll likely test it. Um, but I think I want to hold on to the extra accuracy from Zarka, and I'll get on that more later. Um, but as you see from my gems there, I am using Black Magic Crystal Precisions in each slot. That's relatively universal for most classes, uh, but that ignore all resist 10% is actually pretty huge. The yeah, extra accuracy obviously doesn't hurt either. Uh, I'll skip over the dandelion because that goes without saying. Um, the Tet Nuver, the only thing of notable uh, that's notable there is the uh, Awakened Spirit Crystals. Should be fairly obvious to use those. If you're grinding with your Nuver, you might want to look at the uh, Kama Spirit Crystals, um, but generally you want to keep those in a Kudum for when you're grinding. Um, accessories. All accessories you see I have AP. Um, I was fortunate enough to snipe this for 600 mil way back when. Um, otherwise, I'd be using a second Tungrad, and then I have a Bassy Belt down there as well. All these are all AP. Um, I don't think using any hybrid or DP accessories on Striker makes sense. Um, and not just because it's Striker, but mostly because of the Kaffir system is out. As you see here with my selection of my helm, I use the Gaia helm for the HP, and I have it pen at 130 stack. I got lucky. And uh, level 2 Kafras, so that gives me 2 extra DP and 30 HP. And what that does is take me to 301 DP, which is an important breakpoint for uh, damage reduction rate percentage. Uh, jumps it up one, so uh, with that being in the game, I just don't see it to be viable to waste money on Narc Earrings and other hybrid accessories. So uh, just to hit all the accessories at once. Tungrad is obviously great, especially with the Black Spirit Rage. Uh, additional moves coming out but if you can't do that or you want to save some money just to hit those ap brackets like i have uh, then you're welcome to hit the accessories that you see here moving on to gloves um this is something that i'm currently trying to work on testing i purchased a pair of lever gloves from uh, nightbender for 285 mil i got them to pry i have yet to even get them to try and they've been absolutely terrible to enhance they've soaked up a lot of my materials so for now i'm using uh tap bags gloves if I was to stay with these bags gloves, I'd probably do off and tet main hand, uh, but the Libra gloves have uh, evasion and DR more so than the bags gloves. So I'm looking for a little extra tankiness and I can probably take that accuracy hit with uh, how I play and the items that I've selected. So as you can see from the gems, I'm using Jin Magic Crystal Vipers. Difficult to make, easy to break. Um, but I think just about everybody uses those in their gloves, and it's an excellent source of a free 40 accuracy. Uh, moving up to the chest, I do not use Red Nose. If you happen to have a pen Red Nose for whatever reason, yes, that is better than Tet uh, Dimtree. But the extra AP that, I'm sorry, extra HP that comes from uh, Dimtree's armor is very good. So I suggest sticking with that. I like the Jin and Bon setup for the Kobe's in the chest as it gives 250 HP. Um, with still having 8 DR. Uh, some people run just gins, some people run just bonds, but I figured I'd mix it up, so that's what I do. Um, over on my helm here, I want you to ignore the <laughs> the terrible crystals that have been in there. Uh, they broke a while ago, and I, I just couldn't get the gins back. Uh, so I'm actually going to be replacing them with the same gems that are in my boots, and I'll get to that in a minute. Um, but I appreciate the extra HP that comes from the pen. Uh, from the Gaius Helm over the Griffin's Helm, which just has 5% to all resistances. Um, as, especially as these new gems just came out that we'll get into in a minute. I feel like this really plays into the current meta, especially for Striker. 
So coming down to these Ted Ergon boots, I use these over muskins. We were all pretty hyped when these came out. Um, and we probably hit the hype train a little bit too hard. Evasion's coming back in a little bit. But if you look up here, we do have Howling Wolf, which is a passive that gives us plus 10 evasion rate. And so instead of stacking evasion on evasion on evasion, I really wanted to play into the DR a little bit, and it works very well for Striker. So I highly recommend sticking with Ergon shoes um, instead of muskins for the time being. And then the real important thing here is if you take a look at these gems. So let's go down here. Um, you can see these gems. And I can't move my mouse. Okay. At the very bottom, combine magic crystal whom effect is what we're using. And so the 2x and the 4x, they actually stack together. And so I'm going to be replacing my helmet crystals, which are evasion, with the four set, basically, of the combined magic whom effect. So right now I'm getting an extra 150 HP, five damage reduction, uh, and then I'll get another five damage reduction, another five, uh, 150 HP, uh, more evasion, more accuracy, and then all resistance as, as well. And then the crystals actually have their own effect on top of that. Um, that does stack with themselves. So it's a bunch of HP. It's a bunch of damage reduction. It's some evasion. They're really good gems for strikers. So make sure you guys are making your Han Magic Crystal Hooms. It's the green gem, and then you combine them with these scales right here. And then that'll get you the correct crystal with that setup. So I think this is incredibly meta. And as we get into Node Wars and Sieges, we're seeing the survivability of Strikers and Mystics go way up because of this. Um, so I'm, I'm pretty hot and heavy on, on getting that filled out. The last little piece here is the Vel's Heart or Sharp Alchemy Stone of Destruction, if you're not lucky enough to have one. Having that 5% attack speed is very important when you're chaining or uh, doing a couple of finishing moves, specifically with Rampaging Predator, to be able to sneak that into a couple of your combos for extra damage. Um, you can't really do it if you're fighting Sorks or Ninjas or a couple other classes that get up really quickly. Um, so you want to make sure that you've got one of these uh, as soon as possible so you can combo much better. So that's what I do with my gear and my gems. Pretty straightforward. Um, it's nothing too crazy. I can't wait to try out the new gloves and see how that plays into it. But we're definitely going to be keeping those gen vipers in there uh, and paying to remove them because I do not want to make those again. So let's, let's focus on the skill tree here a little bit. So there's a bunch of different ways you can do it. But... Basically, this is what we've got going on here. And I'll let you guys know what to lock and, and what to what you should prioritize. So let's let's start with priority first before we go through the whole thing. I think the first skills you should absolutely prioritize is Roaring Tiger 5. So when you cast Roaring Tiger, which is LMB and RMB, you recover 300 HP. You don't have to hit anything. And it doesn't matter how many things you hit. You just flat get 300 HP. You use this when you pull away from combat and you have like a little healing combo and I'll go through that in a, in a few minutes but um, this is a priority you don't need to have it absoluted you're not really going to be using the down smash on this it never procs it's not worth it and it's completely unprotected um, rage hammer absolute rage hammer is one you definitely want to have um, leveled up as soon as possible it's good damage it's got down attack on it, and it's a good bound, and the super armor on it is incredible. It lingers for a long time, and you're able to kind of readjust uh, and take in what's going on with the battle, and then make a decision from there. So when you just need a second, you can hit Rage Hammer, and then do anything from there. So that is a very important skill, and you want to make sure that it hits hard, because 461 times 3 does not do anything, uh, but that 1224 certainly does. So those are the first two things you absolutely want to have done. And then you want to make sure you've got your Twisted Collision up. It doesn't absolutely have to be absoluted. And then uh, Flow Nimbus Strike as well. Uh, the other skill you want to make sure you have as soon as possible is uh, Crimson Fang, Bloody Fang, Death Strike. Don't worry about these skills at all. I'm just testing with those. But you absolutely want to have Death Strike. That is a major part of your combo. Um, when it comes into rebombs, these are fairly important as well. This is extremely important. You have to make sure you have flow backstep. You read there, it says invincible while using skill. I have found that to not really be true. It's not an iframe. You can take damage in it. 
I, I think of it more as super armor, but that magic DP plus 15, which most Verbombs have, I think all Verbombs actually have, uh, is really nice too. And then you get plus 30% movement speed too. So this is a absolute must. You have to have flow backstep. So let's go through my entire build here. I'll show you guys what I have and what it's used for. Um, the dashing and the, well, both of them are just dashes. Very obvious. Um, this is for a Verbomb skill. So I keep that locked. Some people keep it unlocked because you can use it for movement. Very easy to cancel out of. You want to make sure you lock Tayback Kick. Um, I have Triple Flying Kick up to four. If you see at three, it does not provide additional. It provides six additional AP. And at four, it provides 10. And then at five, it still provides 10. So I just took it up to that point. Um, Adamantine is not really a damage skill. I'm sure if you absoluted it, you could hit somebody. It's it just, it's not a damage skill. It's something you use for the forward guard um, and you can turn around with it quickly if you want. I locked all the follow-ups to it. Um, moving down again, Absolute Crimson Fang and then Death Strike. Uh, this is just shift RMB and then you hold RMB afterwards and it creates a very good DP debuff that's very quick and easy to uh, easy to apply in PvE and PvP. I have Fist Fury locked. That's actually used for a, oh, sorry, actually used for a Rebomb skill. Still going back and forth between these two, but right now Perfect Blow is winning for me. So I'm keeping that one in check. I don't have Wolf's Hunger absoluted. This is useful once you get really good at the class and you're trying to avoid uh, s some major CC and you kind of get caught out um, so I don't keep it locked or anything, but I'm not prioritizing the point stats looted at this point. I have Knee Hammer for um, Perfect Blow. You're supposed to have that at 3 for it. I don't have Rock Smash locked, but I, I certainly don't use it, at least on purpose. <laughs> I have Tornado Kick locked. So Tornado Kick is interesting because when you absolute Tornado Kick, it does, it does a lot of damage. Uh, there's good accuracy on it and uh, you can catch people with the floating and weave it into combos. The only problem with it is it casts very often when you really don't want it to cast and it's completely unprotected and it's really easy to catch you out in that. So I really suggest keeping it locked. If you wanna mess around with it, you can certainly mess around with it. When I was really bad at Striker, I, uh, I crushed this skill pretty hard and uh, it, it was kind of a meme and it would confuse and frustrate other people. But outside of that, you really don't want to be using it too much. Um, so I use Somersault a lot. This is a really cool skill. It's unprotected, but then it flows into a super armor. So it's, 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 it's a bittersweet move. It takes a lot of practice. Um, but you can really catch people out with this. The float's good. It pushes them back quite a bit. Um, so it's hard to land exactly on top of them all the time. You can camera flip and get on them and, and stuff, but, um, this isn't like a kill shot, but it certainly changes the tempo of the fight. So I have that absoluted, um, and then I have rising blast on top of it, which is uh, very much needed. And that's the important part of it. So what you can do is when you do that ground punch at the bottom there, that's almost the same animation as rage hammer and it flows very nicely together. So I like to use those two together. Coming down to Twisted Collision, um, this is something that's incredibly important. So you wanna have it ranked as high as you possibly can, and then Nimbus Strike as well, which is the kick that's afterwards. Now when you use Nimbus Strike, it is super armor, but be warned, it's not lingering at all. The second you hit the ground, you need to cast something else uh, mass destruction would be a good one. Did I skip mass destruction? No, we're not. Oh, yes, I did. I'm sorry. It was. It looks the same. Adamantine. Uh, this is something completely different. All you, all you have to have is that, which is mandatory now. So flow mass destruction is incredibly important. It's completely super armor all the way until you get back into your normal combat stance. So I have mine absoluted, not that it's that much more damage, but you just use it so often. You really want the extra, I wanted the extra damage. It's it's pretty optional, but this is something you're gonna wanna use all the time and you it can take you from awakening to unawakening very easily. 
So sorry for the sidetrack, but uh, Mass Destruction is a great follow-up to Nimbus Strike. Um, these are some other skills that go along with Twisted Collision. I enjoy using Fatal Smash. Um, I think it's hard to target people out on that. Uh, some other grab classes and, and higher end players will be able to uh, play off of that. Um, I don't use Landslide very often. Um, this is kind of the one that I use anytime that I do this, which is pretty rare um, because it's just kind of bad habit. Um, lock Sweeping Kick. And then again, we talked about Roaring Tiger. Uh, Wolf's Fang is something that I'm working on because it's uh, once you get a little better and you manage your martial spirit shards, uh, Wolf's Fang can do a ton of damage. But unfortunately, if you take a look at the required skill points, um, it's a lot. It's a lot. And so if you turn in your martial spirit shards for the attack speed buff on Crouching Wolf, and fro, uh, flow prey hunt, it will empower a couple of your skills and uh, most notably, Wolf's Fang does a ton of damage if you do so, absoluted. Again, takes a lot of skill points and that is what I'm currently working up towards. So um, I think I just missed the grab off to the side. The grab off to the side, the uh, mass massive suppression, it's the only grab I use, I don't use the awakening grab. Um, and it's mostly just to keep myself safe. There is super armor on this grab. There is not super armor on the other grab. And if you don't want to do all three punches, if you're in a node or siege um, situation, just hold shift right click while you're grabbing. Just hit E, shift right click. Um, and not only will it shorten the grab to one or two hits whenever you decide to hit it, but right afterwards, you'll go directly into your Crimson, Fl Crimson Fang and Death Strike, which will debuff the enemy that you're fighting. So incredibly useful piece of information there. So let's move on to the Awakening here. Um, you definitely want to prioritize all of your flows off to the side. All of these are useful. I hate Fallout. Even though they gave it a PvE buff, I hate it. I ne I just hate it. Don't. You can use it if you want. I absolutely hate it. Um, your Shift Q is great in PvP and PvE, and it's also your 100%, so you want to make sure you grab that. Um, your flow for Skull Crusher is incredibly important. And then this is Ferocious Assault, which is your jump, which is a big part of your movement. Now be careful with this. They just recently uh, nerfed Ferocious Assault and Rampaging Predator. So this has a forward guard to it, if you look. But let me tell you, <laughs> the forward guard on this skill is terrible. It's got holes all in it. You can hit somebody from just barely the side and take him out and you the forward guard goes down just like before the animation ends so it's really hard to use this unless somebody's on their feet or, I'm sorry unless somebody's on their back and you're trying to finish them off or you're behind somebody trying to finish them off or you're just off in the corner trying to heal because the flow for this skill uh, which is bite off heals so you don't really want to ever use that on somebody in PvP on purpose. You want to be in the corner doing your heal rotation, um, which Ferocious Assault also heals um, when you use it. So one heal, two heal in the um, Unawakening, or I'm sorry, in the Awakening Kit, and then Endless Explosion is actually your third heal, but you do have to hit somebody for that. It's almost like a PvE sustain more than it is a PvP heal. So. Really, you want to prioritize everything besides Fallout, um, and then Ultimate Crush is really later. Um, this is a PvE-only skill. It's absolutely terrible and useless in PvP. Um, so when it comes to prioritizing in Awakening, Skull Crusher, most of your flows, um, Endless Explosion, then Rampaging Predator. I'm sorry. Endless Explosion and Spiral Cannon. You want both of these up pretty quickly. Then you can do Rampaging Predator. And then you can come back to this at any point. You can really get away without using this. I only use this for Achman and Manchums. So unless you have the AP to grind that, you probably shouldn't even bother with this. Um, the only other little tidbit I have for you is to lock your E buff and put it on the bar. Okay, so Shift E. You don't wanna accidentally just hit E or your pinky uh, slips off the keyboard or something like that and you end up grabbing instead of doing your e-buff 
um, and throwing your whole push or 1v1 or whatever situation you are in completely off kilter. Um, and then actually the last piece of information I'll give you is to keybind three things. Uh, I'm sorry, four things. Your E buff, first of all. Then you want to keybind Crouching Wolf because that is super armor. And then you want to keybind Skull Crusher because that's also super armor. And these go back and forth with each other. And what I mean by that is right now I'm in Unawaken and then I just hit the keybind for Skull Crusher. I'm in Awakening. But whoop, I want to go back to Unawakening. Crouching Tiger. Instant. And so you can still do the flow with Skull Crusher. All you have to do is hit F and hold it, just like you normally would if you casted it with uh, holding Shift F in Awakening. So it's a very useful way to have some quick, easy movement. And then the last skill you want to have keybound is your bomb flow back step. So if you do Crouching Tiger and you hold S, you do that nice little back step like that. That wasn't the flow, that wasn't back step flow, that was just Crouching Tiger and holding S. So that's great movement. And then you do the flow right afterwards. And that gives you quite a bit of distance for disengage. And people really have to reconsider if they're gonna chase you. And hopefully you're not too far overextended to where you got some help back here to keep you safe. So those are the four things I recommend you guys keeping uh, on the hot bar. There are more you can put on there. You can put final blow and all that kind of stuff too, but those are kind of the mandatory things. So uh, quite a bit of information. Um, I wanted to keep this short, sweet, simple. Please feel free to go back and, and look through my skill tree if I missed something or, or went too fast or whatever the case was. And as always, if you have questions, I check my YouTube videos. I try to do it daily, but every other day at the very least. Um, and then I stream five days a week, so please feel free to come in and check the stream out, ask me questions. Tim Allen, 1337 on Twitch. Um, my last little plug is if you guys are playing on the PC and you're looking to lower your ping, try out No Ping. It's a tunneling service that selects just the one program that you tell it to play or work on, and it reroutes that game only. So it's not a normal VPN where it changes your entire IP address for everything you do and everything is crazy. You just pick one game, very easy to use, lowered my ping in southeastern United States from 115 on BDO down to oh, about 65 or so. So there will be a link in the description so you guys can check that out as well. As always, thank you for tuning in. We'll be back uh, not too long before another BDO guide. Have a great day.